Hey guys, welcome back to the Coast Watch Football Podcast, your home for all things A-League men's, Central Coast Mariners, and so much more. I've got two Mariners fans joining me in today's podcast, Cam and Marty. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. We are going to, first of all, talk about the game that we saw take place from our Central Coast Mariners this weekend, drawing one all with Perth Glory. And just to open it up, just, 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 just briefly, I was really pleased with the performance. I thought it was maybe one of our best performances for the season, and there was a lot of positives out of it. But in the end, just losing concentration at the end of the game, is that what we're putting it down to? Because we saw it happen against MacArthur as well. Uh, Cam, if we want to start with you, what was your take on this game? Yeah, I agreed. I saw a lot of people on Twitter at halftime saying it was a very sort of lackluster performance, but I thought we created plenty. We just couldn't put the finishing touch on it. I thought Cummings and Marco combined really well. Um, Rolls and Hall were solid in the back line, and I think Miller had the game of his life on Sunday as well. He was up and down that right wing, defensively solid, creating chances in attack. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. He seems to be from, like, the 85th minute onwards on Sunday in particular. We just looked like we sort of switched off. The intensity dropped a little bit. Like, I had to check the score to make sure it was still 1-0 because we are acting like we had the result in the bag. And, you know, last minute came back to cost us. It was a sloppy goal to concede too, which makes it even more frustrating. Like, if they score a worldie like Noon did for McCarthy, mm. you're like, well, fair enough. But a goal like that just stings a lot more. Yeah, it's frustrating. And, and, and Marty, do you think we put it down to simply – like just def- a, a defensive, the defensive lapses are costing us? Or do you think it's more of a factor of we should be putting away the chances when we do have them? Because we had a lot of chances in this game. I, mean, I think it's um, half of one and six of the other, as they say. It's sort of, you know, yeah, we, we're creating a lot more chances than we probably ever had in God knows how, even more than last year, I reckon. I think the, 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 the way that the front you know, six are sort of pushing forward, we've got some good width out there. We've got two season strikers up front who can put the ball away and we're just not, we're just not doing it. We we're getting one nil up. We should be two or three. We're just sort of leaving that little gap. I, I know against MacArthur, we're two nil down. We fight back to get to a three, two, and that's great. But again, we still had chances even after the three, two in those last few minutes, we think to ourselves, we should be four, we should be five. So, you know, defensive mistakes are going to happen. You just don't want them happening in the 88th and 90th minute of a game because that mm-hmm. sort of rips your heart out from there. So, yeah, I, I think there's a few errors. You know, we're not sort of pressing a little bit in, in the back line those last few minutes. But, yeah, we've got to put the chances away up the other end. Yeah, that's the thing for me too, because, I mean, Cummings had, had a number of good chances here, Marco as well. Uh, and as, as you guys mentioned, Lewis Miller was, was fantastic and was creating opportunities himself from right back as well. Um, but, look, I, the, one of the things that I do want to talk about is that I get, I get the sense that – now, look, Mariners have had injuries throughout the season, some injuries, but – I get the sense that maybe Monty is still searching for his strongest 11. And, and yeah, we saw some rotation. Obviously, we played a game just a few days prior on Thursday. But, you know, Matt Hatch and Nicolai Muller starting the wide positions. And then we've got, you know, the other guys could play in there. Nisbet, Cy Goddard, Benny and Kololo. Uh, and even up top with, you know, Mateus Maresh, Cummings, Arenia. I get the sense that every week it's just chopping and changing in terms of who's going to start. I mean, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. You know, which players are locked in the starting lineup for you? More so in, att- in an attacking sense. I feel like defensively we're sorted out in terms of who's lining up, but more in an attacking sense. Who are the players? Cam, if we want to start with you, who has to be starting for the Mariners? Well, if we're taking out the back line, Ollie's a lock every single game. Um, I thought at the start of the season, McCarthy might have – not McCarthy um, – Oh my God, help me out. Max Ballard? Ballard, that's it. That's where I got the end from, Maxi. Um, I thought he'd have been starting next to Ollie, but still he seems to have really, he looks like he's the first choice next to Ollie. The wings, that's sort of anyone's guess. I think Cy Goddard should be playing a bit more. I think he's got a lot of quality on the ball. He can play with both feet. Um, I like him. And I think Urania has to start too. Um, his finishing has been a little bit off, but he creates so much and... You know, he, he combines well with Maresh and him and Cummings have really combined well too. So I saw your fan video that went up after the game and people were saying, you know, should be dropped. I think the opposite, I think he should be starting, which he is, but I think he should continue to start. Mm. What about you, buddy? Have you got any takes on that? Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of Muller, but not out wide. Um, when, when he came on against MacArthur, I, I thought that was probably the best substitute appearance since Matt Hatch. It was... Yeah, he was dynamic. He took the ball at his feet. He can play a pass. He can run at a defense. I'm, 
I'm in the, and we haven't done it yet, but I'd love to see Ollie just playing the six by himself. Um, I think with Rolls and Hall, they're, they're just fantastic. I think our back four, as you said, they're, they're pretty much a lock in with Farrell and Miller. I think they're playing really well. And I think Ollie can trust them to be that pivot by himself. I'd play Muller just in front of him. And I'd be going probably Nisbet and Maresh out wide. Maresh actually plays quite well when he's in that midfield. He, he again, drives forward with the ball and leave the two fellas up front and give them some service. And I think Muller would probably do that. I just think it's in that last third of the field. We just need that different option. And I think Muller gives us that option um, because he can run, but he can also play a lovely pass as well. So, you know, <laughs> coaches are coaches and I know what that's like. And there's so many different combinations. And I think you're right. I think, Probably COVID has probably thrown a few spanners in the works of players not being able to play or doing the 90 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever. But um, yeah, I, I'd like to see us maybe go to a bit of a diamond and see how that works for us. Mm, it's interesting. And yeah, even during the fan interviews I did outside the stadium, uh, the game yesterday, some people mentioned that as well, like the diamond formation, specifically bringing that up. And because we now have, I feel like we have so many attacking options when you got Cummings, especially even you played maybe like Cummings and Arena up top, maybe Maresh behind as the 10 or Muller as yeah. the 10 and whether Maresh maybe plays out wide. And, and, and yeah. another player that I feel like you guys haven't mentioned, Josh Nisbet. I, I still think Josh Nisbet is just on his day, has the potential to be one of the best midfielders in the league. He's just incredible. So Look, there's headaches for Monty, but um, it's getting to the point now where we really do have to find our best 11 because all of a sudden we're, we're, we're starting to slip down the ladder. Marin is now in ninth place, uh, level on points with the likes of Newcastle Jets and Brisbane Raw. It's 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 worrying at the moment, considering as well how competitive the A League is right now. Like it, we saw in Newcastle Jets grabbed a big both both Newcastle and Brisbane grabbing big wins on the weekend. Wellington Phoenix have been picking up some good form as well. It's. I'm concerned now for the Mariners, especially now that we look, let's look ahead to our next three away games, three consecutive away games in the space of a week, Melbourne victory, Melbourne City, Adelaide United. As I'm, I'm terrified, honestly. I mean, I mean, I have to back our team, but, but I'm terrified because these are all going to be very tricky games. I mean, what, 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 how should we be approaching these games? Are, are we hoping to get any results out of these games? I'm worried the fact that we haven't been able to pick up wins in these two crucial home games, that, that we won't pick up the results. What do you think, Cam? Well, we seem to be looking, you saw in the FFA Cup against Fixed there were two teams looking to really hit on the transition. Um, and I think that sort of, it might suit us a bit more being away from home for those three games. We can afford to sit back a little bit more and hit on the transition, but you need that pace going forward if you are going to, you know, attack lethally and quickly. Um, Benny has that, but I don't, I'm not convinced he has the work rate to drop back and help out defensively. Um, so, you know, we're sort of talking about the different changes. Muller, he has quality on the ball. Does he go to a diamond midfield and use the wing backs as sort of going up and down the flank, sort of Graham Arnold style when he was in charge, you, you know, the midfield is tucked in and, you know, the fullbacks drove forward. I don't know whether he'll look to a system change. Is that what we need when we're struggling or do we trust the system and carry forward? But we have the opportunity. I think we saw in the FFA Cup and we saw you know, on the weekend, victory, they do have their weak spots. I think we can hit them. Same with City, same with Adelaide. You know, no team is unbeatable, but we really do need to capitalise on the chances like we mentioned earlier. Mm, yeah, and what do you make of it, Marty, too? Do you see Mariners, like, realistically, could we win any of these games against Victory, City and Adelaide, who, in my opinion, are all quality opposition, and especially playing all those teams, you know, at their home grounds, it's going to be tough. Yeah, well, they're, they're three of the top five teams at the moment. And, you know, City are touted as being the favourites. I know they're not sitting on top at the moment, Western are, but, you know, they're, they're touted as being one of those favourites. Victory, I mean, if we ever owe Victory uh, a, a win for ourselves, it's now. <laughs> I mean, they've given us enough, surely. So, you know, and, and Adelaide, Adelaide have just been the, the smoky. They've been sort of, you know, without really everyone sort of saying, you know, I'll watch out for Adelaide. They've sort of been sneaking along. I think they're, what, 15 points now? Um, you know, they're, they're four points ahead of us. They've played a few extra games, but those games become sort of six-point games if we're going to replace them in the top six or we're going to push our own, um, you know, for our own place. So, look, I if you if you look at it now and we get a win, one win out of those three, I'd probably say I'm fine with that. But the pressure that, you know, if we'd have won one of those games in this last week, it would have taken that pressure off us on these travels. But I think now... We definitely need to, we need to get it. We need to pick up a win out of those three games. 
hundred percent. Yeah. And that's the, th that's, that's the big takeaway for me. And, and I, I did put out a tweet yesterday morning, just saying how crucial it was that I think the Mariners win this game. It, it could be a turning point for us. It could, you know, mean the difference between us sort of consol consolidating ourselves as a top six side compared to one of the sides that we saw. I mean, I remember last season in the A-League, I'm pretty sure in the last couple of rounds, there were like five teams vying for like sixth place or something. It was crazy. So we could be in that battle again. And, and, and I think the season's going to be tough. And, uh, one of the things that I think I, I have seen some people bring up online Mariners fans is maybe questioning whether the young players are, are, are who have performed so well so far this season are able to perform for a full like 26 rounds. And what do you guys make of that? Because that yes, they have been fantastic, bit, but but I wonder if they, they're, they're going to have the consistency this early on in their career to, to smash out a successful season like all the way through. Is it going to be up to the guys like Nikolai Muller, like Oli Bazanik and Arenya? You know, do we really have to rely on them? Or do you think we should be sticking with this youthful approach playing the young guys? What do you guys think? Yeah, well, I was going to say, I think they have to. I think they've they, they've they've all had an impact. But you can look at young, you know, Benny Farrell has made an impact and everyone's all of a sudden, yeah, he needs to go to Europe, he needs to do this. He needs to have a couple of more seasons in the A-League to be consistent. And I think that's the big thing with us at the moment is we just need to be consistent, get our job done, get out there, support the boys around them. And you're right, Bazanic, Urenia, Cummings now up front as well, um, Birigetti in goals, Kai Rolls is, you know, wearing soccer shirts these days. These guys need to pull these others in and say, hey, you know, stick with it. Let's just get your job done and, and we'll travel the journey. I don't think the game structure of playing, you know, a Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Thursday kind of, that throws things because you're not getting the regular training. You're not getting the player game, work on it during the week kind of thing going on. So I don't think that's going to help. And I also don't think the chopping and changing that we've had to do also helps, but these guys are going to have to, and if we're going to make top six, um, these guys have got to, you know, stay consistent and, uh, and get the job done. Mm, certainly, certainly. Well, look, fingers crossed that Mariners can get some results in these away games. It's uh, it's, it's going to be a massive week next week for the Central Coast Mariners. So three away games, as I mentioned, all happening in the space of one week. So it'll be a massive test for this very young Mariners squad. Uh, hey, I'd love to touch on the other games that we saw across the A-League this weekend. Some really entertaining games, I thought, and some controversy in some games as well. And, and, and we'll start all the way back on Friday night. Uh, Western Sydney Wanderers 1, Melbourne City 3. Mark Rodan comes into West Sydney Wanderers, picks up a win against Perth Glory, and loses to Western, loses to Melbourne City. And what did you guys make of this game? Cam, you know, Western Sydney Wanderers, is Mark Rodan going to be able to finally bring this team to a top six finish? Or is it the same same old, same old for Western Sydney Wanderers? I can't see Rudin changing too much there. I mean, you saw it on social media when they announced him, people were saying, you want to change the culture, but you're bringing in... Rudan, who sort of seems to be much of the same. Um, I think they really do need a shake up from head to toe. I mean, it's not just the manager and the players. It goes beyond that too. You've seen ex players coming out against people on the board and, you know, it's, it's, I can't see them pushing on beyond that. But if you look on the flip side, Melbourne city, uh, lucky he's been, people have been criticizing him, but we knew he was going to come good eventually. And Tim Cahill esque in the way that he got both those headers off. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy for him because whenever there's a soccer group playing in the A League, you want them to do well, you want them to find form and then carry that on with the national team. So, yeah, I'm happy he got those two goals. Mm, fantastic, hey, fantastic. And Melbourne City, I mean, uh, Marty, I think, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, that they're again sort of being touted as, as the favourites. And they were a little bit sort of inconsistent, Melbourne City, I feel like, for the first, you know, several games of the season. But now they're just looking really dominant. I think Jamie McLaren has, I don't think, he didn't score in this game, but I think prior to this, he had like five goals in four games. I, might, I could be mistaken with that. But they're, they're a team that just have so much quality just to destroy any team on their day. And at Melbourne City, do you reckon they'll be there once again to, for, for grand final day? What do you make of City? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you, you build the team around Jamie McLaren. It's how, how do we structure our team? There are the boys around him to get him the ball, normally around the penalty spot, see sharp box, but how do we get him the ball so he can put the ball in the back of the net? That is how you're going to structure your team. So to me, you know, they've got the quality there. Let's get into it. And I agree with Lecky. I mean, the guy cops some absolute stick off people left, right and center, but look at him come out and do a performance like that, you know, I hope he never does it against us, but you, you, you're glad to see that he, you know, he's out there and he's doing things like that. So look, they'll be, they'll be there when the whips are cracking. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope we're up there with them. Hopefully, 
hopefully. And of course, hopefully we can get a result against them next week. But yeah. the other game, Saturday afternoon, Wellington Phoenix won, Adelaide won. Wellington, I think I think this was they, they should have won this game, Wellington Phoenix. I was watching it and they had some some great chances. And you know, they've brought in a couple of decent signings, Scott Wooden, Gail Sandoval, some of these players who have rejuvenated this squad and they, 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 they look like a really quality side when they get going, especially you've got you know, Rennie Piscopo, uh, David Ball's playing well at the moment. And then Adelaide United as well. I mean, as, as we touched on before, I think, Marty, you said that they've sort of been, you know, just chugging along quietly and, and have some quality plays as well. You know, Bernardo Oliveira, the 17-year-old, Cassio's yeah. son, scoring yeah. his first goal in the A-League as well. Uh, Cam, if I want to start off with you, what do you make of these two teams? Do you reckon, like, which of these teams do you reckon will, will finish higher this season? That's a tough one because Wellington have been on a good run. Um, they've been playing quite well and they deserve to win that game. I thought they created the better of the chances. You mentioned Sandoval. He could have had two, um, but just, you know, scuffed it straight at the keeper. Um, you know, sort of similar feeling for their fans, I guess, how we felt the last couple of weeks, you know, dropping points right at the death. But that's what Adelaide do. They they keep coming and they keep coming. And, you know, it's the young guys for them, sort of as it has been for us as well, getting the results for Adelaide. Um, if you're asking who's going to finish high, I think Adelaide will, um, but it'll be tough. It'll be the top six race like last year will be close again this year, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, both both sides certainly uh, so, certainly looking very competitive at the moment, and yeah, very interested to see where Wellington Phoenix specifically finish. Uh, we, had, we had two very entertaining Saturday night games. We'll start off with Sydney FC Western United. Uh, I, I was really ex- intrigued by this game because Sydney FC have been building some good form lately, grabbing some wins. Western United, of course, we know all about Western United now. They're the kings of the defence. They've got Leela Quiet at the back, the Man Mountain. Uh, one all. Uh, West United grabbing the first goal, Stephen Lustica, and then a late one from uh, from Max Burgess, and then late penalty drama, potential handball for Ryan Grant. Did it? Did it hit his arm? Did it hit, hit his shoulder? Marty, what did you make of uh, this result? Yeah, and and driving rain as well. That rain belted down during that game too, which was a bit of a level. And I think Western would have loved that. Um, I think it really didn't help Sydney's flow in going, you know, getting the ball through to their their fast guys up front. Um, I think it was a big game in the context of the season. I think Western will be very happy with a point. Um, Sydney, as you said, has sort of picked up a few results lately. Um, and I, you know, I, I think uh, for, for us, and I guess the rest of the league, a one all is a, is a good result. And I think West will certainly be happy, but yeah, I, I think it was just one of those games. I, I couldn't pick it pregame. Um, it was one that I thought draw. And then there was reasons that Sydney were going to, you know, be able to continue their role, but then Western had their quality. So look, you know, in the end, I think one all was probably a fair result. Um, never a handball at the end. Don't even start me on VAR. But um, <laughs> it's just, um, it was just one of those things. And, you know, you, you look at the, um, even this weekend's round, you had that decision, which could have gone either way at the end of the game. I think Adelaide scored in the 92nd minute. Um, you know, MacArthur draw level in the last minute. We had the game yesterday, which was the, you know, the last seconds of the game. These games, which are going from three points to one team to a point all, are going to be massive in the rundown for this for the rest of this season. So yeah, it's it's um it was a really good week for that with for for building drama for building drama. Mm. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and and as you said, every result matters at the moment. Yeah, uh, the other Saturday night game was, was was a dramatic one. Newcastle Jets two, Melbourne Victory one, and the big story coming out of this game. Well, a couple of big things. First of all, Tony Popovich not happy at all. I don't know if you guys saw his press conference. He was he was seething. And, unusual, uh, unusual, unusual. Yeah. <laughs> and. And, um, but for Melbourne Victory, they haven't won a league game since Boxing Day last year. Of course, they had the fantastic cup run and defeated Central Coast Mariners in the final, of course. But Melbourne Victory, just like they lost midweek against Wellington Phoenix 1-0, losing here at home to Newcastle Jets. I mean, whether you can put that down to that to that uh, red card, should should Josh Belante release receive those yellow cards? Maybe, maybe not. And then the penalty drama as well late on. But Newcastle Jets, a massive three points for them. Uh, Cam, what did you make of this result? Well, I think it's a clear second yellow for Bratton. I mean, I don't know how he thought he'd get away with that. You're holding onto a player's shirt. I mean, he probably trips it, which what brings him down, which makes it perhaps look worse than what it was. But, you know, by the letter of the law, breaking up a promising attack is a yellow card and it was clear down the wing. So, yeah, for me, that definitely second yellow card. Um, and another thing that I sort of, you know, Valentino Yule for Jets, he sort of really stood up as a player for them. they got all the you know the marquee plays in you know Pena's quality and that ball in that he delivered was mm. just an absolute peach similar to Urenia for Cummings um 
you know, I, I think he could certainly be one to sort of drive Newcastle Jets forward. And a result like that, it's always going to galvanise the squad. So, you know, definitely keep an eye on them because they've got some quality in there. Yeah, and it, it I hurts think to say, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's they're a funny team because, like, when you look at the players, I think Becca Mikuldatsi is now equal top scorer in the league. The striker Daniel Pena, as you mentioned there, for me, he's 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 been fantastic. And yeah, that that pass that he delivered, incredible. Olivia Bamal too, Valentina Yule. They're a dangerous team that I feel like on their day could beat anyone in the league. Marty, do you think us as Mariners fans should be watching out for Newcastle Jets? Like, um, it'll be curious to see which team's going to finish higher now. Like, Newcastle Jets could finish higher than the Mariners this season, yeah. which is weird con- considering where, where both teams were last year. <laughs> Off the back of our last couple of results and then Newcastle scrape a win like that, it's just, <laughs> look, you know, it, it was a game, I mean, I didn't know who to really, who, who I wanted to win out of victory in the Jets because I, you know, Obviously, now we just don't want victory winning anything after beating us in the final. And, you know, we're not going to really jump on any bandwagons when it comes to the Newcastle Jets. But, yeah, I, I think in the end, you know, the, the Jets have always had the players. And I, and I think, you know, th- they were always going to be a team that were going to get better over as the season went on. I think we were sort of in a in similar boat. I think our younger players kicked in a lot quicker. Um and sort of fell into a, a rhythm a lot better and the, and the team performed a lot earlier. But I think Newcastle are very similar in that sense. And you just you know, highlighted some of their players now that are really, they've found their, they've found their feet and they're really starting to perform. So, you know, there's pressure coming from these teams that are around us to push into the top six. It's, it's going to be a close competition, but um, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to sit here and wish the Jets all the best for the season. So let's say, no, they won't. And um, we wish them well. <laughs> I'm just glad we played them at round one and not after they got their <laughs> gears going. And Absolutely. We should give Arthur Pappas some credit too, because he's Absolutely. done really well with that squad. And to bring in the players that he did, you know, he deserves credit. Yeah. And they've complemented each other really well. He's yeah. just brought in, it's like that movie's at Moneyball with a baseball where they just specifically buy the players just to do a certain job. And that's the Newcastle Jets right now. And it's coming together and it's working. So, yeah, we, we won't say all the best, but yeah, <laughs> go, go for it, guys. Yeah, That's right. That's right. Uh, the final game of the weekend, Brisbane Raw 3, MacArthur 1, of course. MacArthur uh, grabbing that, that the big three-all draw with us a few days prior. But Brisbane Raw, a funny team at the moment who was struggling big time at the start of the season and were missing some key players and have been changing formation every every game, it seems, as well. But a big 3-1 win for Brisbane. This is now three wins in the last five games. What do you guys make of this result? It's a fascinating one. Yeah, look, for me, MacArthur, their, their play style doesn't match the players I have in the squad. Like, you look at the amount of attacking options that they have. You've got Noon, De Silva, Urich, Toure, De Villa, or Mariapa. Like, there's so many quali- so much quality in their attack. A bit like, you know, a Man City. They just seem to be flowing in attack, but they're playing like Manchester United, not like Manchester City. Like it's, I could have said Spurs, but I'd be glad I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're playing not to the strength of the squad, I don't think. And I, I think questions do have to be asked, and I know they have been, but I think they should continue to be asked as to why they don't seem to be wanting to play free-flowing attacking football um, with the players that they have. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it is a fascinating one because when you look at the, the team on paper, it's 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 terrifying. When you look Craig, Noon, Danny De Silva, Ulysses, De Vere as well. Um, so another fascinating team to watch. But Brisbane Raw at the moment. I mean, that Brisbane Raw, I, I really like that they brought in Connor Chapman. Connor yeah. Chapman, who's 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 yeah. a proven, you know, quality A-League centre-back or defensive midfielder. I think he spent some time with, with the Jets. I think he was at was Melbourne City too as well. Western United, I think, yeah. as well. But um, a decent signing for Brisbane Raw. Marty, do you reckon Brisbane Raw could push on late in the, second, in the second half of the season and be a finals team. Absolutely. And I, and I think we're talking about getting a roll on. Their, their structure is really good. Uh, it was all over the joint at the start, but you can just see, and, and you could see it in this game, how, and I think that's definitely what won them the game, was that their structure sort of, you know, working together and getting up the field. It, MacArthur had no answer for it. They were just kind of like, you know, they were waiting for the ball and doing all their creative stuff but there was just nothing doing with it. Brisbane were just all attacking together and they, they, they thoroughly deserved the win. And I never picked a three, one, but um, after seeing MacArthur play against us and how sort of hard we found them to break down and to get, you know, behind them, Brisbane just clicked and did it straight away. So yeah, no Brisbane, there's no team this year that you can look at and say, Oh, there's the three points for us because I mean, even Perth, I mean, they've hardly played any games, but the quality that, you know, they've got running around out there 
Um, you know, the minute they brought on Keo and they got Fornaroli up front, they're, they're, they're going to be a chance to score goals. So, look, every team can win on their day, but um, Brisbane definitely looked a lot better structure-wise than they definitely have been for the first part of the season. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and just to round it off, I think the big takeaway we can take from this weekend in the A-League men's competition is, I mean, as you guys said, like anyone on their day can win and it makes it so exciting to watch now. So, look, it's it's, it's going to be really fascinating stuff in the coming rounds and, and, and the ladder is so tight at the moment and us being Mariners fans, hopefully we can see some results over these away games. Uh, guys, thanks so much for featuring on the Coast Watch Football Podcast this week. Before we round out, we'll, we'll throw in some quick match tips. I'll put you guys on the spot. Uh, just just a few of the games coming up. We've got a couple of midweek games, um, but we'll, I'll tell you what, we might as well jump across to the weekend where we've got a full, complete run of games. So uh, next Friday, How Melbourne's- hard is it? Just yeah. how hard is it to find the draw and keep up with it? Nice. Ironically, <laughs> the app's called Keep Up, but I can't actually find the matches that I want. It's yeah. true. It's true. Very it's true. tricky stuff. Um, and and, and it, we have to be thankful as well that, that um, thankfully games aren't being postponed anymore. So so stuff is going ahead. So mm, it's good to have true. football back. True. Melbourne City Jets next Friday night at home for Melbourne City. What do you guys think? Oh, City for me. Um only, only because, and that's not an anti-Newcastle thing, but I think City are the, <laughs> City are the team, and I think um, they'll be back at home, and I think they'll win by a couple. Yeah, I agree. And then we've got Wellington Phoenix taking on Sydney FC. Ooh. Um, I think that has draw written on it. I think Wellington have sort of, um, yeah, have been sort of putting a few points together, and they're there and thereabouts. Um, interesting to see how Sydney back up from the Western game. So, uh, mm. yeah, maybe a nil or one or draw going on there could be a few heavy legs after the torrential rain that we had too um yeah so yeah draw not a bad shout wellington being in good form um you know let's just say wellington one goal yeah nice uh and then as well we got a couple saturday night games melbourne victory central coast mariners can the mariners people result here what do you guys think after after being there for the FFA Cup final and seeing the atmosphere, I know that there'll probably be, what, half the supporters there on this time. So maybe this time around, uh, the, the, the North... And I, I've just got a shout out to the North side as well. How good did that look on the FFA Cup? It was being there and just that wall of noise was just unbelievable. Away support were fantastic. Great to see. But that that whole North side, that was... that was To me, that's football supporting. That was just listening to that. That was just brilliant. Um, oh, look, I'd love to say we could take a point um and i think we can um yeah i can't say three points uh we'll, we'll, we'll go we'll go for a one all draw in that one too we'll take that we'll take i think it point. depends i think it depends what the starting lineup is we mentioned that it's been chopping and changing all the time i think it depends what players I mean, even if he changes the system which i don't think he will but if he does you know that could also have an impact but yeah i'm probably more hopeful than expectant for a draw but two all if we can take every bus from the Central Coast and park it, I'm, I'm, I'm all over that too. So, yeah, get, get a hold of the bus contractors. Busways, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Love it. The other Saturday night game, MacArthur FC hosting Adelaide United. Mm. Again, I mean, MacArthur, I mean, as, as Cam just said, like MacArthur are a team, you think give them the ball and let them just run and just create whatever you like. But Adelaide are not a team that you could probably do that against. They're very well drilled and... You know, again, it's, it's just a tie game. I think MacArthur might pick up the points, um, which you know, will sort of close up that gap in the top six even more. But I'll, I'll say MacArthur by a goal. I'll sit on the fence. So it's a draw. <laughs> I'm likewise too. I'm, I'm expecting a draw in that game. Uh, and then we've got Western United taking on Western Sydney Wanderers. These two, these two teams just faced off recently. Um, it's happening down there in Victoria. Mark Rodan facing his former side once again. What do you think is going to be the result for this one? What a reception will that boy get that game? <laughs> um, look, I, I just think Western are playing too well. Um, and I think, you know, the Wanderers aren't. And I think, um, you know, I think there could be a couple of goals in it. But, um, you know, I, the Wanderers are going to win their fair share of games. I think they will pop up and win a few here and there, but I don't think it'll be this weekend. Yeah, I, I see Western keeping a clean sheet as they have so often this year, easily, I think, one or two nil. Mm, I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys as well. And then lastly, we've got uh, a battle of two of the lower sides in, in, in the ladder at the moment. Perth Glory taking on Brisbane Raw. Ooh. Where, are they, where are they actually going to be playing that one? Is that... Um... I heard something. I think it was just released like an hour ago from the time of this recording. But I think I think they mentioned something about Tassie, so it could be played in wow. Tassie. Okay. Well, 
an away game for both, I guess. I, mm. Look, new, neutral ground, I guess you could call it. The way Brisbane played, you'd be hard pressed to tip against them. So I'd probably go, um, probably go Brisbane by a goal. Yeah, I think Brisbane just have a bit more in them as well. I agree. Cool. So good. Well, look, really, really exciting stuff. And guys, once again, thanks so much for joining on the podcast, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or you can follow on any of the podcast platforms. New episodes out every single Tuesday. Have a fantastic week and we'll see you in the next one.